I have this. I want to do this. And get this. Let's write a text parser. Welcome to basic bits. What I'm going to parse is an ini file, which is a list of key value pairs arranged into sections. And I'll approach this in three steps. The tokenizer figures out which characters belong together, the parser derives the structure of the ini file, and the memorizer puts everything into memory, making it easy to look up keys and values. I'm using C, but don't worry if you've never used it. It has a few peculiarities, but I'll explain them as I go along. First up is the main function, because that tells C where to start. I'm not going to tackle a full ini file yet. I don't think my poor brain can handle that all at once. But I should be able to figure this out if I start with only one token. Normally you would read this from a file, but I don't really care about that part, so I just create a string in my code. And this is how you say string in C. It's actually a pointer to the first element of an array of characters, but we'll get to that. Just read it as string for now. Okay, one token, nice and simple. The tokenizer is responsible for grouping characters into tokens. Now in this case I only have one token, so all the characters belong to it. Still, I have to figure out where it starts and ends. So it starts at while at the beginning, so that's index 0, and to find out where it ends, I just look at every subsequent character. In C, every string ends with a null character, so that's what I'm looking for. The end index is at 4. So a token is basically a start index and an end index. I'll put that in a struct. My tokenizer needs to accept the init text and return a token. First I create the token. Now I want to go over each character one by one and I need to keep track of which character I'm currently looking at. I need that index. It starts at zero and that is the start of my token. Then I loop over each character as long as the current character is not the end of the string. And now I know the end of the token and I can return it. Okay, to see if this works, I'm gonna put a breakpoint at the end of the program and run it. In the debugger, you can see that the start index is at zero and the end index is at four, exactly as I expected. That's what I call a good start. I think I'm ready for more than one token now. Let's try a full assignment. The tokenizer will still look at each character one by one and it still needs to figure out the start index and the end index for each token. The first token ends at the equal sign, so when I see that I know the end index of the first token. The second token is the equal sign, so that's easy, that's just one character long. And a third token ends with a null character. Now, if at this point you feel I'm making a lot of assumptions and I'm cheating a little bit, then, well, you'd be right. But you know, cheating, it makes things easy. And I like it when it's easy, so let's go with it for now. Now that I have multiple tokens, I will need an array. I'm not going to go fancy with dynamic lists or anything, just a static array. I'm also keeping it small, because I don't want to end up with all kinds of stuff I don't need in the debugger. Okay, now I need to keep track of which token I'm currently working on. If you're not used to programming in C, this may look a bit strange. But I have an array, right? Now, a current token is a pointer to an element in that array. That means if I change current token, I'm actually changing the array. At the start, current token needs to point at the first element of the array. And to find that, you need to know that in C, while a variable like tokens holds an array, it acts like a pointer to the first element of the array. In this case, that's exactly what I need, so that's why I assign tokens to current token. Let me change this to current token. Because I'm using a pointer, I also need to change the dot to an arrow. It's just a weird C thing. Remember, the first token doesn't end at the null character anymore, it ends at the equal sign. That's the first token done. To go to the next token, all I have to do is increment a pointer, so that's pretty convenient. The second token starts at wherever we currently are in the any text. It's one character long, then it ends. Next token. The third token works the same as the first token, so I'm just gonna copy that. Only difference is that this one does end with a null character. That's it, 
Let's return the tokens. Okay, now the compiler complains. What's going on? Oh right, yeah, this doesn't work. I'm creating the array inside the function so it will go out of scope by the end of the function and that means that the array will be removed from memory. So effectively I'm returning a pointer to an array that doesn't exist anymore. That's bad. Let's see, I actually need the tokens in main so I could just create the array there. Yeah, that'll be fine. Then I have to pass it to tokenize, which doesn't have to return anything anymore. Just fix this. That should be better. And the result? Three tokens. Looking good. Good, good, good. It's a bit hard to see if start and end are correct for every token, but there is a trick you can use. Now, this is all kinds of strange and you don't really need to understand it, as long as you know where to plug in the right numbers. So, you start with the any text and then you jump to the start of the token for the first token that's zero. And then, here we go, you cast the result to a pointer to a character array of length 4. Then you dereference that pointer. Yes. Right. Clear? No. Well, for the second token, just plug in the start here and the length here. So that's correct. And the third token, also correct. Nice. Next, I want the parser to take my tokens and turn it into an assignment. The job of the parser is to figure out the structure of the text. The tokenizer only recognizes words, but the parser turns them into sentences. The way it does this is by building a parse tree. If I take the tokens I have, I can arrange them as a tree like this. The assignment operator tells me this is an assignment, the key is on the left, and the value is on the right. I can put this in a struct, no problem. The struct is already called assignment, so I don't need the assignment operator to tell me this is an assignment. So I just leave it out. Alright. Parse will receive some tokens and return an assignment. I create the assignment and to find the key and value I need to go over each token one by one. So I create a pointer to the current token. I'm gonna cheat a bit again and assume that we get the right tokens in the right order. It makes things easy. The first token is the key. The second token is the assignment operator so I can skip it. The third token is the value. See? Easy. The assignment operator has a key and a value. Let's see what they are. The key is a font. And the value is monospace. Splendid. I could write a get function that reads directly from the parse tree, but then I would need to keep the parse tree and the tokens and the any text in memory even when the parser is done. So instead I'll copy the relevant data into a memory structure that's easy for the get function to use. I call this part the memorizer. It consists of two things. First I have a string buffer with all the keys and values. Second I have a table that tells me where all the keys and values are. What I do is, I take the assignment and I start with the key. That goes from index 0 to index 4, so I copy those characters from the any text into my string buffer. And then I record in my table that the key started index 0 of the string buffer. Then I do the same thing for the value. It goes from index 5 to index 14, so I copy those characters from the any text into my string buffer. And then I record that the value starts at index 5 of the string buffer. The setting struct needs two things. First the string buffer, a static array again, keeping it simple. Just big enough to contain the key and the value. Second, an entry for the key and the value. Later on this will need to be a list of entries, but for now a single entry will do. With that I can create the memorizer, which takes the any text and the assignment and return settings. I can create the settings and then I need to start copying characters, so how is that gonna work? Well, 
I need to copy from the any text, and I know where to start because the token has a start index. It also has an end index, so I also know where to stop. Then I just need to copy each character in between to the settings buffer. I can do that. The destination is the settings buffer. Then I'll start at the start and stop at the end. Copy character, next character, and that's the key dot. You know what? Let's call the memorizer from main and check if it works. Well, yeah, it does work, but now there's all this random stuff after the key. I'd rather have all zeros, so let's zero out the settings buffer. Okay, that's better. There's an added bonus, actually, because now I don't have to write a null character to end the string, because it's already there. I can just skip to the next character. So I'll do that, and then copying the value is pretty much the same thing. Well, that's nice and all, but I actually forgot to update the entry. I need to keep track of where the key and the value are in the settings buffer. The key is easy, that's at zero. But the value... Well, I could take the destination pointer and subtract the pointer to the settings buffer. That works, I think. But yeah, I don't like it. I don't think that's very clear. I'll just introduce an index into the settings buffer. I think that's easier to read. It's not that much work, really. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's better. And does it work? The key's at zero, the value at five. It certainly does. With the settings in memory, I can finally write my get function. All it needs is the settings, and the key I'm after, and it will return the value. Except I want to pass the settings by pointer, because I don't want to copy the entire settings buffer. Now the settings variable isn't a pointer, it contains the actual settings, so to make it a pointer, I need to take its address, and that's what the ampersand is for. I need to compare the key I get to the key in the settings. To find the key in the settings, I'll start with the string buffer, because remember, while the variable holds the buffer itself, it acts like a pointer to the first element of the buffer. Then I skip forward to the start of the key. For the comparison itself, I'll use string compare. That's a C library function, so I need to include string.h. And it returns zero if both strings are equal. Which is a bit weird, but if you think about it, it does make sense. But it's still a bit weird. What you gonna do? If both keys are equal, we return the value. Otherwise, just return a null pointer. Does this work? Yes! I have a fully functioning parser now. Well, I cheated a little bit here and there, but hey, all the parts work. That's it for now, but next time... Next time I'm going to tackle multiple assignments. So, subscribe if you want to stay up to date, check out the description for links to the source code and reference material, and if you like my content, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you, and remember, coding is fun!